then I'll have that job. I mean, folks, and we've seen it again and again and again. A little buddy verse got saved just a while back and got out of a job. And not only did he get a job, but he's going to be self-employed. And somebody set him up that, that he'd be a, a partnership. I mean, it, uh, lose uh, probably a great job, but got a better job. And you know, the, the little thought says you can't, God can't give you a better job until you lose the one you've got. But you know what? And I, I thank God for the people that we've met this week and we've got to work for some great people. Favor means if someone's giving gifts away, then I'll receive that gift. Boy, I like to receive, don't you? These people, you couldn't give them nothing, you know. But boy, it's not me. <laughs> Today I have favor with God and man. I see me in health. I see me prospering. I see blessings following me. I see blessings overtake me. Yeah. Folks, we, we have to get that mindset. And, and I walked the floor a lot of times for a long time. Lord, I received favor. And, and I, ha I had a confession list that I, I was speaking over. We watched uh, 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 Joyce Myers, and she's talking about having people pray in their closets with a confession list. And they pray an hour. Each one was signed an hour and an hour to pray and confess. And part of that was that they would have uh, ministries, worldwide ministry. And that they'd have places all over the, the all over the world, uh, places where people could be helped through her ministry. And you know that's a worldwide ministry today. But part of that is because they confessed and they believed God and they got their thinking, they got their thinking in the right place, and they began praising God. The thought says, "My God shall supply all my needs according to His riches and glory." The problem, the psalm says, "I've never seen the righteous forsaken." Nor God's seed begging for bread. We're, we're going to break it down a little bit better. Or words, are we talking divine hell? The scripture said, there is he, uh, Proverbs 12 and 8, there is he that speaks like a piercing of the sword. We destroy our health. And, and here's some examples. And, and no doubt you, you've seen, you've heard these. I've heard them. So I just can't get better. I got this sickness and that sickness. In 90, I was sick in 91. 92, I had surgery. 93, I, I mean, boy, it's better for 94, 95, 96. All we talk about is sickness and disease. Then that's all we'll have. Folks, God wants us to a higher order. And we need to, to be thankful for what God has done and where God has taken us to. Uh, what things soever you desire, here's the promise. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them. And you can have, we need to learn to pray the answer. To Jesus would pray as if he's already in heaven, already looking down. And he said, Father, I have kept them and I have lost none of them, except the son of prediction being Judas. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Or confession, here's my confession list. It says, I thank God for my health. I thank God for a strong heart. I thank God for a willing heart. A sound mind, a sound body, a strong back, organs at work, the way God ordained. With long life, the Psalms 19, 9 and 16, with long life will I satisfy you and show you my salvation. We visited the hospital many times, and I'd go and pray, and I said, are you satisfied? They were, they were up in years older people, and they were pretty, pretty well sick. I remember visiting... One little man, and I wouldn't gave him uh, probably 15 cents for his life. And that little woman stood and said, I'm, I refuse to let him die. I refuse to let him die. And anyway, I sent it Murray Mountain and said, we're taking him to Lexington. And, and it wasn't just a, probably two weeks, just two or three weeks, I sent him at, at a, uh, was having a fellowship meeting, and here he was, a picking and a grid, and wasn't he? And he couldn't even tell. I mean, give the Lord a big hand. God had raised him up. And he's still raised up today because someone stood. And God said, what you bind on earth, I'll bind in heaven. What you loose on earth, I'll loose. And she said, I, I will not permit him to die. I will not permit this sickness to take him out. And she stood and believed God, and God raised him up. And he's a mighty worker for Jesus. Another little fella that, that uh, we went to the hospital, and this little lady said, I refuse to let him die. A buddy I'd known my, about my whole life. And God raised him up. He's still indebted to God. But, but I'm here to tell you, when you and I will take a stand and believe God, that his promises are yea and they're amen. Hallelujah. 
with long life will it satisfy you. Over and over again, we've seen God add life to people because they refuse. They refuse to give up. They refuse to quit. Uh, to my father-in-law, again and again, he'd, he'd hold that hand out. He'd want us to agree the prayer of faith. And again and again, God added life to him. And, and But folks, there's coming a time. There's a time that we have to let people die. There's a time we have to say goodbye. We can kiss them, say goodbye, and I'll see you over yonder. Amen. So we have to pray and be, have, have the mind of God on things. One of the greatest resources for blessings is our health. Deuteronomy 28. If we have health, we're able to work, we're able to enjoy family and friends, we're able to go and do for God. Third John verse 2 said God wants us to be healthy. God wants us to prosper so that I can have for me and mine and enough to help someone else. A neighbor said you can have everything and not enjoy it. Life is more than stuff. Godliness with contentment is great gain, 1 Timothy 6 and 8. So, you know, folks, it's important. It's important the way that we think. And if we can get the mindset that God wants to pour blessings out upon us, 